brothers and sisters. Welcome to this uh, beautiful Sunday worship service, our beautiful Sunday comma worship service that we have together here at the Bridge Church Fellowship. Glad that you're here with us. Got two announcements. Uh, this coming Thursday at 5.30 in the afternoon, uh, the United Me Argenta United Methodist Church, the part of the bridge, will be having its annual charge conference. It will be held in Warrensburg, United Methodist Church, 5.30 this Thursday. It's kind of our annual business meeting and a time when we get together and celebrate our ministries and uh, well, what we have done in the, this past year and where we are planning on going into 2021. So it's a good time to get together and, and be with others as we celebrate. There's also a second uh, announcement and that is that on Saturday, October the 17th, there will be a, a carry out soup supper. So just kind of mark that on your calendar. That'll be a good time to uh, come and get a good meal for your family and loved ones and help support the ministry of our, ch of our church. So uh, anyway, we uh, look forward to those events. It's been really great uh, just to get together every now and then and see each other. So. How about, will you please join with me, my friends, in our opening hymn, which is, There's a Wideness to God's Mercy. There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. to God. Praise the Lord, for it is God who saves. It is God who forgives. It is God who delivers. Give thanks and praise to the Lord. O oh God, who is our strength, you have protected us from those who would seek to oppress us. You have shielded us from those who would seek to destroy the good gifts you have put in us. Your love and power never fail. Thanks and praise to you, our safety and stronghold. We exalt you, O God, majestic in holiness, for there is none like you. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God, who forgives and who saves. My friends, would you please join with me in our prayer of confession? Gracious, Gracious and loving God, God you, you lived, lived for us. We, we have, have not lived, lived for you. You, you have, have forgiven, forgiven us. We, we have, have not forgiven us. others. You, you have, have loved us. We have not loved ourselves, ourselves nor have, have we loved one another. Take, Take pity on us and forgive us, God. God. Help, Help us to forgive. forgive. Help, Help us to live for you. you. Help, Help us to love through Christ our Lord. Amen. People of God, our sins are forgiven. God is merciful and gracious and is Lord of us all. Reconcile to the God who loves us. Let us live and love through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God is unfailing in blessings and love. With thankful hearts, let us offer up to God a portion of what God has given us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. 
God and Holy Ghost. Amen. O God, we thank you for these gifts. Multiply them and enable the work of love and the righteousness of your kingdom in the world. We thank and praise you. Amen. This is our time of joys and concerns. Time to celebrate and, uh, and lift up our prayers. I do have some prayers this morning. I know that uh, I know that this is a difficult time in history that we live, and there are many people who are just struggling. I, be honest, I find my own times of feeling down and doubt and and worry, uh, anxiety at times, and. Uh, I don't think it's unrealistic to have some of those feelings because of the times that we live in. Having said that, it's really important that we come before the Lord and we, we try to maintain our part of that relationship that God offers us for. We're not the first people to live through such a time as this. Uh, may have been a very, very long time since, but this is the part of our, the history of humanity and it will continue to be. So let us just pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd also like to lift up prayers for my grandson, Patrick, who is just having some very difficult times, some of it related to our time in history and some of it just other personal issues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I've also been requested to have prayers for the Roger Ed, Edcom, uh, who is sick, and for Donna Benz, who is also sick. Both of them are in need of our prayers, and they're in need of God's healing touch for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to lift up prayers for the Jack Drew family of, in his passing. This is a time when we would pray for comfort and presence of, of the God who created life itself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd also like to lift up prayers for uh, Lowell and Donna Fisher and for their family. Um, one day, one year tomorrow will be the passing of their son, Larry. Honestly, I cannot imagine the pain and hurt that still is present. Um, Lord, in your mercy, please touch their hearts with your peace and your presence, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And in a bigger sense, we pray for the students, the teachers, the staff, all those who are involved in school, public and private. Uh, the, the challenges before them are immense and the concerns that are ever present are worrisome and have significant consequences. So let's pray for wisdom and guidance, and let's pray for that everyone stays healthy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to lift up prayers for the doctors and the nurses, the people on the first line of defense against this, uh, this pandemic, uh, the, the medical people, the EMTs, the police, those who come in contact or potentially come in contact with us every day as they take care of emergency situations. Lord, be with them, guide their thoughts, their hearts, keep them safe, keep their families safe, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We'd like to lift up like to lift up the patients and the families uh, who have impacted especially by the coronavirus. Um, I find myself as I hear stories that kind of creeping closer and closer, you know. In the beginning it was people on the East Coast or the West Coast. But we most certainly have this uh, virus present in our own county and, and in people that we know. So we pray for them and we pray for their families. We pray for healing. We pray for safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd like to pray for our nation. It seems to be a time of incredible divisiveness and 
what seems at times to almost be mean-spiritedness. We need to re rethink our relationships with each other, both those on one side of issues and the other side of issues. Help us, Lord, to learn how to speak to each other and to hear each other and to respect each other again so that we try to find answers that work instead of political points. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I'd also like to have a time of just unspoken prayers, a time when you, uh, you folks out there can lift up your prayers uh, for those individuals and those persons that, uh, let's see, I forgot one. Lynn and Linda are traveling tomorrow and uh, they lifted up, ha uh ha, -huh. I don't have the name. I'll bring it. I will have it when I come back here in just a little bit. The S for prayers also. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers.
There's another one. Thank you, Amy and Manley. That was absolutely beautiful. All the music is one of those instruments through which God touches our very soul and brings us peace. Um, Lynn and Linda asked for the Covalo and Williams family and the passing of, of their friend, Annette. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And uh, we pray for Karen in Oregon, lost her house to the fire this week, and son was in a car crash yesterday. These are friends of yep. Angela's friends from uh, another time in life. You know, it's interesting. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. You know, one of the things that's interesting, and one of the blessings that has come out of this uh, crazy time that we live in and this pandemic is that through this mystery of technology we've been able to reach out to people in other parts of the world it's remarkable the number of people who come to be a part of this worship service uh, online lord in your mercy we give you thanks and pray for your grace in all of this that we proclaim the gospel of Jesus, the very good news to a hurting and hurting world. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, would you please join with me in the prayer that Christ Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who Father, art, art in, in the heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Do you know that people for 2,000 years have prayed this prayer? Jesus taught this 2,000 years ago. How many different languages, how many different ethnicities, how much diversity people have found somehow in this prayer? God's presence to us. We aren't the first to go through these really difficult and trying times. And God has been there and is here, and will be here, for and with us. Thank you, Jesus. Holy God, your word is strong and leads our feet to your holy dwelling place. Strengthen and guide us with your word through the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn is, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. <laughs> reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 18 verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came and said to him, 
Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then this fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he could pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we're going to talk about forgiveness today. How about that? How is it about forgiving other people? I forgive you. <laughs> I forgive you. Are there any more difficult words to speak than that? Maybe the only other one that's more difficult than I forgive you would be to say, would you please forgive me? Let's say a woman has been the victim of domestic violence and you realize, my friends, that through this pandemic and our social isolation and the things that are happening in our culture that the subject of domestic violence is rising, addictions are rising, People are finding more and more difficult ways to cope with all of the issues that have spun out of this pandemic. So let's say that her husband has made her life miserable, betrayed their marriage vows with his violence toward her. Is she expected to forgive and, well, as we sometimes say, forgive and forget? Uh, pretty tough stuff. Every day, many of us are the victims of something so terrible as domestic violence, but rather of the thoughtless and uncaring act of others. Their effect is cumulative, leading some of us to great resentment and bitterness. Should we be more forgiving? Or do we hold on to things? Think for a moment of the worst thing that someone has done to you. Now picture yourself extending the hand of forgiveness, saying the words, I forgive you. I have one of those thoughts as I got into this fairly quickly. Not particularly that I needed to forgive someone else, but I needed to ask for forgiveness from a very long time friend. That was very difficult to do. So, will you not agree with me that forgiveness may be one of the toughest acts we Christians are asked to do? Why should we forgive? Whatever we, whenever we pray the Lord's Prayer, we ask God to forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. We just prayed that prayer. If we've been forgiving of our sins by Christ, we should want to forgive others for their sins against us, shouldn't we? Or perhaps we ought to forgive because we yearn for a broken relationship to be restored. Most of the time, we just let the conflict fester. I don't like conflict at this season of my life, and sometimes it's 
easier to just dodge than to actually deal with it. We'd rather lose a brother or a sister. We'd rather be disobedient to that very prayer that we prayed than to venture forward with forgiveness. Forgiveness is tough. Theologian Gregory Jones says that we need to think of forgiveness not as some isolated, occasional heroic act, but rather as a way of life, a constant practice for Christians. Is that a part of our calling as we follow Jesus to learn to forgive others? We say as we forgive ourselves. Remember that part? Most of us know that some of the most frequent difficult occasions for forgiveness are related to friendship. If you're friends with someone, you have lots of opportunity to need to be forgiven by that person, if the friendship is to endure. Joan says that we ought to think of forgiveness as related to the practice of friendship with God and with other people. The central goal of forgiveness it's not to get over guilt, it's to reconcile, to restore communion with God and with one another and with the whole of creation. Reconciliation, coming back together, healing. Joan says, the practice of forgiveness calls us willingly to do things with and for one another so that communion can be restored. Communion is that intimate relationship, that closeness. Forgiveness works through our ongoing willingness to give up certain claims against one another, to give the truth when we assess our relationships with one another, and to give gifts of ourselves by making innovative gestures that offer a future not bound by the past. Think of that. A future not bound by the past. Let go. Let go. Not easy. Being forgiven requires an ongoing willingness to honor a new claim that has been made upon us, to speak with a new truthfulness, and to live in a new way with one another. Have you noticed that when you have a relationship that has conflict in it and pain and hurt, and that when you actually deal with it and you come to the other side of that pain and that hurt, that issue, do you remember that you come to a new place in the relationship? It has now more depth to it and more closeness because you have learned that you can trust the other person and they can trust you. Something on the other side is actually much more of a blessing. We believe that our God is always making all things new. When he reached out to heal brokenness through forgiveness, we're participating in some of the same creative action as God. Wow, that's a thought. Specific words or gestures are demanded. Words like, I'm sorry, please forgive me. And I forgive you. Let's work on this. Perhaps it takes a gesture, such as a handshake or writing a letter to someone. There was a woman who was forever unintentionally, but truly hurting people with her words. Hard to believe someone would do that, isn't it? She made up with them by first depositing her homemade pie on their doorstep. She made lots, lots of pies. What a girl she was. It was her way of walking down that long, risky road toward reconciliation. Forgive me, I'm sorry. Sometimes forgiveness is easier if we put ourselves in the other person's place. You know, attempting to imagine life as they must live it. That's an important piece here, friends. That's called empathy or compassion. Forgiveness takes time and involves hard work. Forgiveness is dependent upon a host of other Christian practices like prayer and Bible study. Maintaining this relationship with the God who created. I found that a major source of some of our most anguished and heartfelt prayer is the prayer for God to give us the grace to forgive. Help me, Lord, to forgive and let go. Gregory 
and Joe list some steps toward forgiveness, which are very helpful, I think. We're willing to speak, be, we are willing to speak truthfully and patiently about the conflicts that have arisen. I find this to be one of the most difficult steps in the hard steps toward forgiveness. Telling the truth to ourselves and to one another. One of those most important steps in, uh, uh, in the 12 steps for AA is to be honest with yourself about yourself. That's some tough work there. Very important work. We acknowledge both the propriety of anger and bitterness and a desire to overcome them. It doesn't do any good to deny our hurt or anger. Anger can be a sign of passion for right to be done in the world, a passion acknowledgement that wrong really has been done and ought to be set right. Yet left to fester within, anger can eat us up from the inside out. We have concern for the well-being of the other as a child of God. Mm, this is important. The one who has wronged us is not doomed to be forever an enemy. He or she is a potential friend in God. It was this ability to see enemies as potential friends that enabled Abraham Lincoln, 150 some years ago, to speak a kind word about the South during the Civil War at a moment when feelings were the most bitter. Asked by a shocked bystander how he could do this, Lincoln said, Madam, do I not destroy my enemies when I make them my friends? Think of that, you know. We recognize our own complicity in conflict, remembering that we have been forgiven in the past and we are ready to repent. This does not mean a cowardly unwillingness to hold others accountable for their actions. The proverbial, there are two sides of every question, ought not paper over the truth that there are often real victims and real villains in a situation. But we also need to recognize and resist our temptation to blame others while exonerating ourselves. As Jesus elsewhere stated, we tend to see the speck in other people's eyes while not noticing the log in our own. This right here is related to the fourth step in AA, my friends. To do an honest inventory of oneself, and a part of it is to recognize our own part in the pain that has come our way. Important stuff. Make a commitment to struggle to change whatever cause that continues to perpetrate our conflicts. Forgiveness does not merely refer, refer back to the past event that caused the breach. It also looks forward to the restoration of friendship. Forgiveness is the practice of justice working with God for a more just and loving world. We're moving forward into a new tomorrow. We confess our yearning for the possibility of reconciliation. Sometimes forgiveness seems like hoping against hope for reconciliation in this life. Yet in our difficulty to forgive, let us remind ourselves that this is but a glimpse of the kind of yearning which must fill the heart of God all the time. Paul reminds us, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against us, them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. We have been blessed, my friends. God has forgiven our sins and let go and forgotten them, you know? And we can move forward into a new relationship. That's what we're talking about. Our forgiveness begins in the heart of God, with God's relentless determination to have a family, to make us friends. Forgiveness is not forgetfulness. Our everyday slogan, forgive and forget, has it all wrong. We don't forget the wrong or sweep it under the table. Rather, we remember the wrong Focus upon it so that it might be forgiven, so that the wrong no longer exercises power over our future. Forgiveness is the exercise of imagination, imagining our world as a sort of place where we are not forever enslaved to our misdeeds 
but where God works with us to make all things new. Today's Gospel speaks of forgiveness as something that goes on in the church. And if we are to be the church, a community that risks bold deeds in the cause of the Lord's justice, that speaks the truth to power that lives together in the body of Christ, then we will need lots of forgiveness. The church, as the place where we learn those disciplines of friendship with God and with one another, has to be a place where there is much forgiveness. Yes, friends, conflict does happen in the church. You know, I've, I've observed nearly anyone that comes into a church as a new person and they see our conflict that happens as one of the obstacles that most often they have to get to the other side of to begin to grow in faith because they see us and they say, my goodness, those folks should be able to get along with each other. Well, if we practice forgiveness and listening and caring and seeing the other as a child of God also, even though we disagree, the Lord is in the middle of that. And the outside world needs to see that part of who we are as the body of Christ also. We need another, one another in order to learn to tell the truth about our lives. We also need to unlearn those ways of talking with one another that confuse and hurt and to learn patterns of redemptive word and deed that build up the church as a place where people learn to practice forgiveness. Ephesians urges us to speak the truth. It says speak the truth in love with one another, not only with a passage that closes uh, with instruction to forgive one another as Christ forgives us. Speak the truth in love. Forgiveness is one way we are obedient to Christ's vision for us and for the world. In forgiveness, we help God recreate the world to redeem the mess that we've made out of creation, to make that move whereby we cease being enemies to God and to one another and become friends. How about that, my friends? You know, I've come to where I like the terminology of brothers and sisters. This is a family, and like families, we have our differences at times. It isn't a matter that we don't have differences. In fact, sometimes those differences are a blessing because it helps us to dig into things and learn at a, at a deeper level and begin to see things that we've been blind to. So having those differences is good. It's how we deal with the differences that makes the difference. Can we respectfully disagree? Can we learn from each other? Boy, when that happens, God smiles, smiles upon us. Let it be so, Lord. The world we live in today needs to see the church as a place of forgiveness and healing. Amen. Will you please join with me in our closing hymn, Freely, Freely. Others will know that I
Walk in the strength and confidence that God guides your feet. Therefore, live for the Lord. Show mercy and love to one another. May the God who protects and defends keep you in safety, mercy, and love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, my friends, go in peace. Go in peace. So, just a reminder from old Pastor Bob, wear your face mask, practice social distancing, wash your hands often, stay home when you can. Please, please, please be safe and stay healthy. Pray daily to the Lord your God to give thanks for all that you have blessed, been blessed with. We truly have been, even in these challenging times. I'd like to thank uh, Manly and uh, Lynn and Angela um, for their help in this worship service. I hope and pray that you have been blessed, my friends. Go in peace. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.